is Patriot Act, or as it's known in Saudi Arabia, Air 404, not found. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the 10 most censored countries. We have a very popular artist here who is speaking out on behalf of uh, freedom of speech and expression. And For this list, we're looking at the countries where the press has the least amount of freedom and the internet is heavily restricted. Are there other countries which have equally censorious policies? Let us know in the comments which country you'd least like to live in. Number 10, Cuba. Censorship in Cuba is a complex issue, and it's worth keeping in mind that conditions for the press and the freedom of information have improved significantly in Cuba this century. For a long time, there were strict controls on what information could be broadcast or printed, and protests in 2021 raised awareness of the political realities of life in Cuba. Various government bodies are responsible for regulating access to information. This, other than in a few spots, is essentially useless. Cuba also has an internet infrastructure not as advanced as other countries, which limits which citizens can get online, and then they need to be savvy enough to get around various blocks. The government is afraid of the day that people actually have true access to the internet. And that's all despite freedom of information being enshrined in Cuba's constitution. The, the government as a whole, and the Communist Party in particular, is not interested in significant significant political change. Number nine, Equatorial Guinea. This is a paradox, absolute paradox is that this country should be rich. Human rights groups have put a lot of attention on Equatorial Guinea in recent years for the country's oppressive government, particularly in 2020, when many of the country's journalists working on television showed soldiers using immense violence to enforce the COVID-19 lockdown. I sometimes refer to Equatorial Guinea as the North Korea of Africa. There are no freedoms. Equatorial Guinea has also detained many journalists for reporting negatively about the country's president. While Guinean journalists who have left the country and reported on it from elsewhere have also received condemnation back home. It is extremely dangerous for people in my country to speak their mind about anything the government deems political. But though the country strictly controls its own media networks, access to foreign TV stations is allowed. So people are able to get outside news that isn't filtered through a state mouthpiece. Pobreza. Una cosa, tampoco no hay pobreza. No hay pobreza. No. Number eight, Iran. For decades, Iran has enforced increasingly strict policies about the internet and social media, and acting even more as unrest in the country has increased. <laughs> Most notably, during 2019's bloody November protests, the internet in Iran was totally shut down for a week, which severely hindered the ability to organize protests and spread the word about injustice. A law was passed by the Ministry of Islamic Culture and Guidance, which requires movies to get accreditation in order to be shown outside the country. Most Western media sites are completely blocked from the general population, while even stricter rules were passed by the Iranian parliament in 2021. Als junge Iraner zum Erfolg Sit Happy von Pharrell Williams ein Video aus dem Iran produzieren, werden sie deshalb verhaftet und im iranischen Fernsehen vorgeführt. This 2021 bill was seen by many as trying to curb internet access, with the government constantly cracking down on communication apps like Telegram and WhatsApp to stop people from talking to one another. Instagram, Instagram uh, Number seven, Vietnam. The censorship apparatus of the Vietnamese government has become powerful enough that even Facebook has been forced to purge user content from its timeline. Vietnam has freedom of speech in theory, but not necessarily in practice, with people often being prevented from expressing opinions against the Communist Party online. I caused the national scandal for saying I don't want to have children and not wearing a bra. And like many other countries, journalists often come under fire, with three reporters getting prison sentences in 2021 for, quote, spreading materials opposing the state. It's these opinions that are also being excised from the accounts of Vietnamese Facebook users, with Facebook unwilling to risk losing Vietnam's large user base, which provides it with hundreds of millions in revenue each year. If they don't like the lyrics of the song, they will ask you to repeal the song from the album. Number six, China. Though China is often the first country brought up when people talk about censorship, the actual situation is significantly more complex. Prominent taboos include the three T's, Taiwan, Tibet, 
and Tiananmen. However, the Chinese Communist Party does block and restrict access to many Western websites, especially those viewed to have a bias against China, and doesn't have a great track record where freedom of the press is concerned. Many journalists have been detained by the authorities over the years, notably those who broke the mandated media silence around the SARS outbreak in the early 2000s. China has its own state-controlled media outlets, and the country's websites and social media platforms, like Weibo, can easily be controlled. There are also robust blocks on foreign websites dubbed the Great Firewall. Number 5. Ethiopia the Ethiopian government's control of the internet has ebbed and flowed in the 21st century, with rollbacks of some laws being followed by reversions to stricter censorship. In 2020, fewer than 20% of Ethiopians had access to the internet, though it's worth noting that this is a huge increase from where it was before, and it is getting better each year. But not only is it tricky just to get online in Ethiopia, but political unrest, like an attempted coup back in 2019, has also triggered massive internet blackouts. The 3G network no longer works because of political instability in the country. This particular blackout lasted for an entire week and prevented millions of people from accessing any news about the situation. We lost our daily income. As you can see, there are no customers. Number 4. Turkmenistan Shockingly, in early 2020, just as the world was beginning to understand the severity of the COVID-19 pandemic, Turkmenistan's government decided that the state-owned media companies were not allowed to use the word coronavirus. The whole uh, hospitals are being closed uh, for quarantine with people and with uh, doctors inside the hospitals. This is just one example of the country's long history of suppression and censorship, as the authorities will also detain journalists with impunity. And many of these journalists have gone completely missing. But a big part of Turkmenistan's censorship is of the Russian language. As a former Soviet state, the country has a lot of Russian speakers, but Russian newspapers were banned back in 2006. And in 2021, some Turkmens claimed they had to be made to swear on the Quran not to use VPNs. And to this day, there are dozens of people languishing in Turkmen prisons, and their families have no idea where they are or, in fact, whether they're dead or alive. Number 3. Saudi Arabia the country already has a damning track record where human rights are concerned, as it is still illegal to be gay or trans, and women were unable to drive until 2018. <laughs> the Saudi monarchy has for decades led punishing crackdowns on the press and eventually the internet, silencing any criticism of the royalty, government, and the country itself. He was in communication with me until 24 hours before he disappeared. And he sent me a uh, last communication was wishing for my birthday. In 2019, Saudi Arabia made the news again for demanding Netflix remove an episode of the talk show Patriot Act in which Hassan Minhaj criticized the royal family. Of all the Netflix originals, the only show <laughs> that Saudi Arabia thinks violates Muslim values is the one hosted by a Muslim. And yet, bizarrely, Saudi Arabia has also pledged to drastically increase its citizens' access to broadband internet which seems contradictory when so many websites are blacklisted. Here's the irony. By censoring our episode, Saudi Arabia made us go viral. Have they never heard of the Streisand effect? Number two, North Korea. It remains one of the most heavily censored and restrictive governments anywhere in the world. Not only is information extremely controlled, but people can get arrested if they communicate with or attempt to communicate with those who have left the country. I was the first one to visit all the officially allowed locations for foreigners. The, the downside was uh, I had to present everything to Pyongyang and they had to approve everything. While even China does have some independent media outlets, despite being heavily supervised and monitored by the government, North Korea does not. Absolutely all news and information is carefully delivered from the country's singular news agency.
용무제, 용무제. 그때 다 모이지. Even access to radio equipment is severely restricted to stop people from tuning in to foreign stations, and all journalists must go through intense background checks and are not allowed to go against the party line. So, 몰래 몰래 북한 종교에 대한 뭐가 뒷소리죠, 막 욕하고 이런 거할 때는 다른 방에, 그러니까 누구 너무 방에 다 이렇게 갖다 놓기도 하고. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Eritrea. Why are young people fleeing this country? I don't know. According to metrics published by the Committee to Protect Journalists, Eritrea is absolutely the most heavily censored country anywhere in the world. Can we ask you a few questions for French television? Oh. Can we ask you a few questions? For the Haina. For French television? No. The government is so cruel to journalists seen to defy it that many have tragically died while in custody with no trial. Though information is predictably thin on the ground. Currently, we have only one television. That's the government-owned Eritv. Though Eritrean government officials say that foreign TV networks are widely accessible in Eritrea, only 1% of the population has any kind of internet. Anonymous activist groups have sprung up to try and provide independent news, often from outside Eritrea, but doing so is extremely dangerous and carries huge risks, as we've seen from the many terrible stories of journalist detention. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.